So you want to learn how to play Super Auto Pets. Well, my good friend, you have come to the right place. As an auto battler connoisseur, I pride myself on my ability to optimize every move as much as possible. As a result, I have narrowed down a few key factors that form the perfect basis for any build strategy. In a game like Super Auto Pets, every optimization makes a real impact on your game. One mistake can spell the difference between 10 wins and 5, so I'm going to spill the tea here, let you into my process so we can all get a little better at this brilliant auto battler. First things first, what type of builds even are there? The Super Auto Pets meta has and always will boil down to three main build paths. One, scaling for the Chad gamers. Two, snipes for those who don't actually feel like playing the game. And three, summons for people who want to run the exact same build over and over on repeat without thinking. Each of these builds will manifest slightly differently throughout the game, but this strategy will apply regardless of which build you're aiming for. In the early game, turns roughly 1 through 5, you should aim for one or two strong pets. This is where you can squeak out some free wins and get yourself that much closer to taking home the proverbial super auto pets bread. While the detriment of losing at the start is eased due to the life refresh at round 3, don't just accept a loss or a tie, getting 3 or 4 early wins here can dramatically shift your power curve so you may not even need to get to late game. We'll talk about that shortly. For this reason, get the highest statted units you can find. If you're feeling frisky, an early horse cricket can also go a long way, but be warned it won't scale well and all your friends will make fun of you. Positioning is perhaps the most important aspect to early and mid game. In general, you want your highest stat pets in the front of the team. The reason for this is a 4-5 will trade 1 for 3 if they're leading with 3, 2, 3 or lower pets. This alone will win more games than not, and it's the main reason why stats tend to be the defining factor in early and mid game, not the pet abilities. During your mid game, roughly rounds 5 to 10, you should get a passive scaler like a giraffe or baboon paired with a solid ability pet that can scale well into the late game. Some fantastic mid game combos to start with are elephant with either blowfish or camel, as well as an ox with some sheep. You're typically looking for pets that will hold their own and match the pace of your opponent's leveling while you set up for your late game pivot. At this point, don't feel bad just dumping a ton of foods onto your mid game power units. Getting an extra 5-5 on your ox will often spell the difference between getting 2 for 1 and 2 for 1-ing your opponent. Remember the golden rule and say it with me. One stat point can and does spell the difference between a win and a loss. As we pivot into late game, you need to take a good long look inwards and ask yourself, how much time do I have left? Whether you're sitting at 8 wins on turn 10 because your early game popped off, or you have one win and five hearts because you've inadvertently made a drawing machine, the answer to this question will define how you carry on the next few rounds. If you're smart, and you got a bunch of early wins, odds are you can just keep pumping food and perks into your strong pets and crank out the 10th win before anyone even gets to late game. In this case, there is no late game because you're just too good. You can click away from the video right now, knowing you're a big baller, and go get yourself some wine and charcuterie. You've earned it. If you're like me, on the other hand, you probably fall into the latter category as you tell yourself that you're quote playing the long game when in reality you're just scaling too slowly to win but just fast enough not to lose in this scenario the next several rounds are critical a late game pivot should feel drastic you may feel like you're selling off some real bangers on your team but you have to trust me when i tell you that your level 2 rabbit with 5 attack and 50 health is not going to fare well into a level 3 tiger octopus combo just get rid of him now while you have the chance also, don't be surprised if in the matter of two turns, your entire team consists strictly of tier 5 and 6 pets. There's a reason these pets are locked behind high tier walls. At this point, you might be saying to yourself, Well Alex, that's great and all, but how do I even pivot? Once again, my young one, you have come to the right place. A successful pivot starts with finding a foundational high tier pet. For some builds, this is often a turkey or a fly. For snipes, this may be a crocodile, leopard, or mantis shrimp. For scaling, this is usually going to look like a dragon, poodle, or a T-Rex. Also, whatever build you decide to run, grab as many tigers as humanly possible. Seriously, tiger is the one pet that is S-tier in every single build. Trust me, grab the tigers. At this point in the game, you should be feeling one of two things. One, utter shame because you sold everything and failed your pivot, instantly cascading you into a pit of despair and dishonor as you curse my name. 
or two, your egos through the roof as you watch the plan unfold with a 50-50 level 3 octopus tiger demolishing whatever last shred of hope your opponent had going into turn 15 as their small ego honey badger gets sniped and takes out their own teammates. Hopefully you see more of the winning scenario here, but keep in mind there's a science to this, it is very seldom coming down strictly to luck. You can always think back and find turns where you could have played more optimally. Now to summarize it all together, we're gonna 1. Get a few strong statted pets early game. 2. Pivot into a mid game powerhouse combo. 3. Find your target foundational tier 5 or 6 that you can build around. And step 4. Profit. Well y'all with this simple outline you are sure to improve your game and start seeing more 10 win runs in no time. If you've made it this far, I imagine you've either found this useful, or you just like hanging out with me. Either way, drop a sub, I'd love to have you around, and there's plenty more to come. Let me know down below if you think I missed an important step in extra, let me know down below if you utilize this in game, because I want to know how it goes. Anyway, I've been talking for long enough, thank you so much for watching, I will see you on the next one. Peace.